Good morning, and I take the opportunity to welcome you to the Come to the Water television ministry, a ministry of evangelization, bringing the good news of the gospel to everyone whom has an ear to hear, a heart to believe and receive, and I hope that this is you and I this morning for what this is the day that the Lord has made, and what are we going to do? We are going to rejoice, and we are going to be glad, for truly the joy of the Lord is our strength this morning. Thank you so much for allowing me to come into your home one more Sunday. And I tell you what, time is rolling by quickly. And we can praise the Lord this morning. We can magnify his name. We can glorify his name. We can lift up the name of Jesus. No other name but the name of Jesus. But at the mention of the name of Jesus, every knee's got to bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God. And I know you have confessed Jesus as your Savior, and you have made him your Lord. He is your God. I know that you have done that. And for someone this morning, if you have not done this, do not allow that this day would pass you and you don't call upon the name of Jesus. He has got so much love for you until it's just going to floor you as to how a holy God can love we people who are, we're sinful people, amen? We're not perfect yet, amen? But I tell you what, he's perfect. Don't worry about yourself. He's perfect. And his love for you and for me surpasses our understanding. So today, I come to invite you, whether you know him as Lord, Savior, and God of your life, or you don't know him at all, to come and to receive that love that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that if you would believe upon him, if I would believe upon him, I would have everlasting life. Amen. He did not send his son into the world to condemn, his, to condemn the world, but that through him we would be saved. Get in under that umbrella of teaching this morning concerning God's love. Allow that holy God with the finished work of Calvary that Jesus did for you and for me over 2,023 years ago, better still, before the foundations of the world. Receive this Jesus into your life so that salvation will come to you New life will come to you. Oh, there's gifts that God wants to just place in you that you will be a channel of grace, a channel of teaching to others. You will receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You can grow and you can be transformed, taking on that new character and that new nature. If you have never done a Life in the Spirit seminar, I just presented to you the uh, seven teachings that is included in the Life in the Spirit seminar. Do one. Do one. I challenge you to grow your faith 
with a series of teachings. They are done at least once a year. And uh, with Holy Ghost on last week, we concluded it with a growth and transformation, but it's been going on for seven weeks. And I tell you what, it's a refresher, it's a reminder, it brings you back, but then it teaches you along the way. You never get too grown up to learn about Jesus, amen? To learn about the Father, to learn about the Holy Spirit. So I tell you what, next year, uh, when after Easter, um, just before Pentecost, churches who have prayer groups, they go on and they start a Life in the Spirit seminar to teach you and I how to live life in the Spirit. So if you missed it this year, it's going to be announced and we are going to ask, invite, and I know that you would be happy to attend. So today I'm going to be talking about spiritual growth and what spiritual growth is and how do we grow spiritually, keeping it simple, keeping it in the Word of God so that you and I can examine ourselves and see how far we have come in growing into the statue of Christ and that we have been transformed, uh, taking on that new character and that new nature. Okay, so I tell you what, it's some good time to sit down and to keep it simple, talking about Jesus this morning. You call somebody up and tell them that come to the water with Gloria Sonia is rolling over television right now. Let us go to our Father in prayer. Heavenly Father, we just come before you in the mighty name of Jesus, coming before you always in thanksgiving, coming before you always in praise. This is the day, Father, that you have made. And regardless of what is going on with us, you say rejoice and be glad in this day. For truly the joy of the Lord is our strength. Oh, merciful God, I thank you for waking me up this morning. And I thank you for waking up the television audience this morning, people who are watching this morning. And Father, we are clothed in our right mind. We thank you that as we slept last night, did not know nothing that you had your holy angels in charge watching over us, Lord, keeping us from all evil, all harm, and all danger. And for that, we want to say thank you. Upon arising this morning, we're all excited. You had a roof over our head. You had clothes on our back, shoes for our feet, food for our table. For that, we want to say thank you. Thank you for blessing our families, Lord God. Thank you for blessing us with long life and good health. Thank you, Lord God, that we want to be blessing to others this morning. As we pray and as we invite everyone to join in prayer with us this morning, we are believing it by faith that there will be a move in our lives by the Holy Spirit, Father, that will take us by surprise. So today, we bring ourselves before you. First of all, we say, Father, forgive us of our sins. Because of Jesus, we're asking for forgiveness. We thank you that we have been washed in your blood and that your spirit indwells us. But we are weak human beings and sometimes we fall. And we thank you for forgiveness. As we repent, we turn from our wicked and evil ways and we turn to you, seeking that forgiveness, confessing ourselves to you, knowing that as far as the east is from the west, you remember not our sins no more according to your word. And for that, we want to say thank you. Remember our nation, Lord, United States of America. Bless our nation, Lord, as we are coming to the birthday of our nation. We are believing by faith, Father, that a change will come. We are believing by faith one by one, Father, that every American will turn to you. We are believing one by one, that every state will call upon you. We are believing one by one that the nation will call upon you once more for righteousness and truth. As we stand, Father, and as we pray, as we cry out to you, we are believing by faith that you're in charge. You're in charge of our lives, 
and you have not given up anything concerning the United States of America, concerning your whole wide world, you're still in charge. So therefore, we can find refuge in you, Lord God, not to worry, and Lord God, not to be shaken by things that are happening in our world today. You're in charge, and as our Father, we call upon you, and Father, you bring peace in our hearts, and for that we want to say thank you. We lift up the state of Louisiana, its governor, Lord God, and everyone that makes laws there that we have to live by. Bless our state of Louisiana, Lord God. We believe in you and we stand, Lord God. We stand for your righteousness. So call each and every one by name, O oh God, into your kingdom as we stand in prayer. We pray for all of our local officials, Lord God, and we thank you for the Sheriff's Department, for the City Marshal's Department, every policeman down to the security guard that walks or drives the streets in Opelousas and the surrounding towns, Lord, bringing protections for the citizens. We just want to thank you for them and ask for your protection to be upon them. We pray for those, Lord God, who are sick today, those in the nursing homes, those who are sick at home. We are believing by faith, those who are in the hospital, that Jesus, you're still a healer, you're still a deliverer, you're still the one that sets free. So as we pray for each other, we believe in by faith for healing, for deliverance, to be set free. We pray for those who do not believe in you, Lord God. We pray for salvation, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, that they can receive and believe on your love, Father. That they can call upon your holy name. And Father, believing by faith that you're going to make haste to help them. So I'm believing today that a multitude, Lord God, will come to know you in the pardoning of their sins. We thank you for that new life that you want to instill in everyone when they come to know your son in the pardon of their sins. When they come to accept the finished work of Calvary and to receive him into their own hearts, asking they shall receive, seek and they shall find, knock and the door shall be open. We are believing it by faith, Lord God, for new life for your people. We thank you, Lord God, that you say you've got gifts that you want to give to those who love you and for those who have come to know you in the pardoning of their sins. And Lord God, today, as we say we are channels of those gifts, that Jesus, through the power of the Holy Spirit, can continuously work through us to bring that love, to bring that word of salvation, to bring that new life. We believe in it by faith. Somebody will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Somebody will learn to grow Somebody will be transformed today. So Holy Spirit of God, it's all about you to speak to the people of God on how to live this life in the Spirit. You are God and you are God alone. As we say, gather your people to yourself, Lord. Some may be incarcerated and have no hope. But Lord Jesus, you are the hope of glory. And we are believing by faith that wherever this ministry is reaching, that a change will come in lives today. Father, it's all about you. Using this vessel to bring the good news of the gospel of salvation, the gospel of love, the gospel of new life, the gospel of gifts, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, growth and transformation, to each and every one who has a desire, Father, to know you in a way, O oh God, that is personal. So today, as we give ourselves completely and totally to you, we say, have your way. In Jesus' name we pray and let the church say what? Amen, amen, and amen. This is the day that the Lord has made, and what are we going to do? We are going to rejoice and we are going to be glad but truly the joy of the Lord is our strength. We have a video for you. I will be right back. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Can I 
for the things you have done for me things so undeserved yet you gave to prove your love for me the voice says of a million angels cannot express my gratitude all that i am and ever hope to be i owe it all to thee enjoyed the video as much as I enjoy bringing this to you. All right, what we're going to talk about today is going to be growth. Growth in the spirit. What is growth in the spirit and how do you do that? All right, spiritual growth, what is it? And spiritual growth is detailed in 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 3 to 8. Get your Bible and read along with me. His divine power has given us everything we need for life and spiritual growth. Everything we need for life and godliness through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. Through these, he has given us his very great and precious promises so that through them you may participate in the divine nature and escape the corruption in the world caused by evil desires. For this reason, make every effort to add to your faith goodness and to goodness knowledge and to knowledge, self-control, and to self-control, perseverance, 
and to perseverance, godliness, and to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, love. For if you possess these qualities in increasing measure, they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. So somewhere today, somewhere today, go back and read 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 to 8, and you'll get a better understanding of what I'm trying to cover with you right now. It'll just make more sense to you of what is being said. So spiritual growth includes increasing in your knowledge and understanding of God's word. Decreasing in your frequency and severity of sin. You know we all fall short of the glory of God. So therefore, when we stay in the word of God, and Jesus is the one that grows us. We can't grow ourselves. We can't change nothing. But the power that has been given within, the power of the Holy Spirit, is there to grow us up, to transform us, taking on that new nature and that new character that we received at salvation. Increasing in your practice of Christ-like qualities. Well, how do we do that? Well, we get into the Word, and we let the Word get in us. And we receive and live the Christ-like qualities that was given to us. Increasing in our faith and trust in God. There's nothing hard about it. The Holy Spirit helps us in all of this. You and I have made a conscious decision to trust God. To trust Jesus and to trust the Holy Spirit, the Godhead, the triune Godhead. We had a calling upon our life by the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. We didn't decide that on our own one day and say, well, I'm going to go live for God. Well, it didn't happen to me that way because I already thought I was living for him <laughs> because of the things that I would do, trying to be good. And there's nothing wrong with trying to be good. But you know, I had to learn to be godly. Amen. I had to receive the work that Jesus paid for on Calvary's cross. Sin power had to be broken off of my life, off of your life. Receiving God's love, receiving that salvation, receiving that new life, receiving the gifts, receiving that baptism of the Holy Spirit, and now receiving the growth and the transformation that all of that brings to you and to me through prayer, through studying of the word, through service, and through community of believers, living in a community, serving one another. How do we serve God? A God that knows everything, does everything, has everything. Well, you serve his people. You belong to the kingdom of God now. And there is a change that has come into your life. Now we got to learn to grow into that change and to live that change. And that's going to take a lifetime. So if you feel that you're going nowhere fast, don't worry about it. Stay in prayer. Studying the word of God. Serve God. Be with the community of believers. Be with people like yourself. Go to your church services. Do what you have to do, and God is going to do the rest. Amen? I'm a living, breathing witness, and he's not most done with me yet. But I can share with you what he's done in my life. So if you feel that your growth is just not there, then we need to reexamine what you're doing. Because it has been given to you, and it has been given to me. And we got to do something with that, okay? We got to cooperate with the grace of God. And God is going to help us along the way in the name of Jesus and by the power and presence of the Holy Spirit. Amen? All right. 
increasing in your faith and trust in God. Perhaps the best summary of spiritual growth is becoming more like Jesus Christ. Amen? In 1 Corinthians 11 and 1, Paul says, Follow my example as I follow the example of Christ. Jesus Christ is the ultimate example of what it truly means to be spiritual. Amen? Okay, well, you might say, well, how is this done? In order to spiritually, for spiritual growth to occur, you must need to make sure you possess a true spiritual life through faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. All right? You got to make sure of that. Okay? Stay in prayer, stay in the Word, and I'll tell you what, an illumination will come to you. Amen? And this is the testimony. God has given us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. He who has the Son has life. He who does not have the Son of God does not have life. That's according to 1 John 5, 11, and 12. That's not just something I'm telling you. That's in the Word of God. When you believe in Christ Jesus, the Holy Spirit lives inside of you. John 14, 16, and 17. And you are a new creation in Christ. 2 Corinthians 5 and 17 says, Therefore, if anyone be in Christ Jesus, he is a new creation. The old has gone, the new has come. Your old nature, which is dominated by sin, is replaced with the new nature that is under the influence of God's Spirit. Romans 6 and 7. Spiritual growth can only occur in a person who knows the Lord Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. Do you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior? All of this you can believe, and all of this you can receive when you receive Jesus. Ask him to come into your life, be your personal Lord and Savior, be your God. I tell you what, it's time for me to go. Time goes by quick. So until next month, know that I love you with the love of Jesus in my heart. May the Lord bless you real good. It's my prayer for you. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. May the Lord bless you real good. May the Lord bless you real good. Woke me up this morning, started me on my way. May the Lord.